right, guys, what's going on? Derek, GovKidMethod.com. Right now, I've got this grounds maintenance services contract out of Bristol, Pennsylvania. This was just released today. So today is the, the day, <laughs> maybe for you, if you're in uh, grounds maintenance landscaping, um, if you can get out to Bristol, Pennsylvania, uh, this is for the Department of the Army. So what I'm going to be doing today is uh, I'm going to walk through like we did in yesterday's video. I'm going to show you a little bit about this, tell you kind of what you need to do to bid on it. Uh, maybe somebody from our, our community here can go out and bid on this. That's what my goal is. And the goal is to kind of get you guys used to seeing these things as the busy time comes up. I want you going through this process. And, uh, you know, July 7th is the due date. So we've got time. Maybe when you guys can go out and win this, like I said. So I'm keeping these videos a little bit shorter. But after I go through that, I'm also going to go um, read through some of the comments, give some community shout outs. So you want to stick around and make sure you don't miss that as well. So let's go ahead and get into this bid for ground maintenance. Again, if you're a small business, you do landscaping, anything like that, you can make it out to Pennsylvania. Or maybe you're in Pennsylvania. Uh, I can tell you, I already looked ahead at this for a second. It's not that bad to go after. You know, this is it's kind of easy. You know, yesterday was an easy one too. Um, so you guys can do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so I already said uh, ground maintenance. This is the solicitation uh, number. Q5118, this is Department of the Army. Um, let's see, July 7th is the due date and it was published today. Um, set aside, let's take a look. Total small business set aside. So I know a lot of you guys have getting caught up on this. So as long as you're a small business, which if you're watching this, you are, I'm sure I don't have any large companies watching this video, then you can bid on it. So you don't have to be woman owned. You don't have to be, you know, service disabled vet. You don't have to have hub zone, okay? Everybody can bid after this. So no more complaining about that. Um, landscaping 561730. Um, and again, Bristol, Pennsylvania is where this is going to be performed. We've got four documents. We're quickly going to go through them. We have the solicitation. We have the PWS performance of work statement. We have a site map. You're going to get to see the grounds a little bit, you know, pretty helpful when you're bidding. And also a wage determination, which, you know, we won't spend a lot of time on. It just kind of shows you the minimum amount of money that you have to pay your employees out of the appropriate counties. Um, etc. etc. So let's take a look. We've got the solicitation doc here. SF 1449 form. We know you're gonna have to fill this out. Next, we've got this, uh, they're telling us total small business set aside. Awesome. Um, and they're kind of just hitting us right away with this instruction to offers section L. This is super important, one of the most important uh, areas when you're putting together your requirement and you're reading through a solicitation because this is kind of telling you what is required from you, the bidder to respond to this. So they're giving you, um, it looks like one through 12. Um, and really this whole first page, uh, we're gonna go through that extremely, extremely quickly. The purpose of the solicitation is for ground maintenance at Bristol uh, Veterans Memorial, US Army Reserve Center. That's what the USARC is. Um, and if you're in this area, you probably know, you probably know exactly where this is. You probably have driven past this. Um, if not, you can look it up on Google Maps, Street View. Yada yada, next code 561730, if we didn't already call that out. Single award, going to one uh, company, firm fixed price, means they give, you know, they award the dollar value, and if you do it for less, good for you, they're not gonna take the money back. That's what firm fixed price means, it's one price. And if you go over and you end up losing money on the contract, you also can't do the, the opposite. You can't go back to the government and ask for, for more money. It's not at times a material contract like that. And again, I'm not even an expert in those different types of uh, nitty gritty type contracts, but firm fixed prices is, is the most common of what you guys are gonna see. Again, they're, so they're giving us the, the address here. We already have that. They are letting us know there's a primary site visit. So that is an important thing to note, uh, 24th of June. So today's the 15th. So we've got nine days for the site visit. Plenty of time guys, plenty of time. If you wanna go after this, try and win this, it's going to be on um, June 24th. And then an alternate site visit on July 1st, if you miss it, all right? So continuing on, see, we're already done with that page. Let's keep the pace up. Um, questions are due July 2nd. So that's going to be the day after the alternate site visit. I don't think they arrived at that by chance. They want to allow for all of the Q and A's to come in, all the questions to come in based on um, the information and you know questions maybe that come up during the site visit. Send those to uh, contracting, which we've got Teresa Eckstein and Anthony Pavise here. So completing a quote for submittal. All right, you've got a questions for quotes. 
We've got answers for you. That's This is what you're doing here. So they're straight up telling you guys. SF1449 form, block eight. You know, you, you've, you've got to fill out the SF1449 form. It's not that hard. Also, provide your name, title, address, email, phone number. Okay, typical stuff. Also, fill out these other blocks in the SF1449 form. Not a problem. Make sure you fill out the price and cleanse, which I'll show you in a bit. We haven't seen those just yet. Uh, make sure your duns and cage and your tin um, and any set asides you have is also. So think about it like this. Think about a little bit of a letterhead, a cover letter. You've seen me do this in my bid proposal training janitorial services from last week. I'll pull it up again if you didn't see it. I show you kind of all that information, what a letterhead could look like, what a cover letter could look like. Offer shall be valid for 120 days. That's normal. Uh, then they're letting us know those other attachments, the PWS, the map, and the wage termination, which we know are already there. All right, so that's like, let's pause for a second. This is what you need. This is so easy. Did you hear them say past performance? Did you hear them say a technical approach at how you're going to do this? No, you heard them talk about pricing cleanse and filling out the SF1449 form. That's what you did hear them talk about because that is what they need. That's what you need to do to respond to this. You're gonna need your, your insurance for being a small business, typical anti-terrorism stuff to get on the base. If you are awarded the contract, contracting is info, and here we are, pricing cleanse. So this is gonna give you more information. So clean number one, quantity 16. So this is 16 mowings, okay? And um, again, I, I peeked at the PWS, the statement of work. They tell you what they mean by mowing. Otherwise, this would be impossible for you to price and I would not be showing you it. But just take my word for now, you, you're you gonna understand what mowing means in a minute because, you know, how much, where, what type, is there a bunch of crap on the ground you gotta pick up, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you're gonna price quantity for one, that's what the each means, so you put the price for one here at the unit, and then the amount, you take the one times the quantity, so it's whatever this is, if it was $50 for one, then it would be 50 times 16. It may be 500 for one, I don't know. Um, but your total would go here and it would go here. And then you do the same thing for trimming, edging, stormwater ponds, spring and fall cleanup, one time fence clearing, and that's about it. So that's the base year. And then we see 1001, which lets you know it's option year one. So it's all the same cleanse repeated two so it's option year two so it's 2001 so this is how you can find out how many years the contract is option year three and then option year four so we know this is a base plus four option years guys this is a five-year contract bristol pennsylvania if you're not there it might make it might make more sense for you to be there if you can be there for the next five years so don't pass on this so quickly um there may not be a lot of competition for this maybe there is maybe there isn't you know um, and then I believe the rest of this is uh, your reps and certs and your clauses. Yes, because we've already seen the instructions to offers and then addendums. All right, so um, guys, it's kind of that easy going through the solicitation. You need to read it more thoroughly than I did, but we are keeping the pace up for this video. This next document is that PWS statement of work. And this is gonna be so much quicker. So just you know, stay with me for 60 seconds here. We're gonna make sense out of this very quickly. So the PWS, the statement of work, another common document, just like that SF1449 solicitation doc that we just looked at, this document. This PWS document tells you the description of the work, the details of the work. And like I said, you need this to know how to price. So there's a few you know, super important things in here that tell us period of performance. Well, one base year plus four option uh, periods. Well, guess what? You know, Derek just taught me that. You know, I just learned that it how, how to, to gauge that by looking at the pricing cleanse. But here you can be for sure. It's one base year and four option um, years after that. So a five-year contract. Cool. Ten uh, recognized holidays. All very typical and normal stuff, guys. I'm trying to show you the the important stuff here, and specifically when it comes to your pricing. And here's more site visit information first. It's urged and expected to conduct a site visit prior to submitting your offer, okay? You're responsible for it either way. But the specific tasks and the schedule of work, this is what's important. What's mowing? Remember I said in the pricing clin, you were gonna be asking me what is mowing? Well, this this lines up. All of these, these line up. So mowing, 
Mowing. Boom. This is why a statement of work is super helpful. Edging. Let me come back here. Boom. Trimming. Same same difference, I guess. Spring and fall cleanup. It's going to be here some... Okay, there's the edging one. Stormwater ponds. We got to look for that. But then here's the spring and fall cleanup. So these these pretty much... And here's, here's the ponds. So they all match up. So if you want more information on mowing, they're telling you specifically, like the grass should be cut approximately every 14 days. Okay, well that helps you to know to price. And also, the grass shouldn't get higher than three inches or be less than two inches when you cut it so it doesn't burn. Um, so things like that, that's all in the PWS and they have these details here for each of those important items identified in the pricing cleanse. That's really mostly all that you're gonna need. You know, here, here's a look at the survey that you're going to um, inspection checklist when you do the work. How do you know you do a good job? You know, if you get good marks. So it's a very simple form. This is what you're going to get filled out every time you go out and do work. Um, you're going to get one of your employees to sign off on that from the government. And you're going to use that probably to also help you bill an invoice. So now, um, last two documents here, guys. We're flying through this thing. Uh, here's that map that I promised. So this kind of gives you an idea. Uh, square footage. Uh, mode, 198,000. Trimmed, 20,000. There's also this stormwater pond of 24,000. And uh, this edging, uh, 2,600 linear feet, it looks like. So um, just the one map, pretty easy. And then lastly, this wage determination, uh, Davis, this is going to be Davis Bacon. Nope, this is, this is not Davis Bacon. This is still Service Contract Act. So it just looks a little bit different, but this is professional services contract still. And again, this just tells you the minimum amount you have to pay your employees. If you win this contract, this is what you should base your pricing off of. You should find some sort of labor category. You know, you see accounting clerk, customer service. Um, in the previous example, we found janitorial. You could probably find some sort of uh, labor grounds maintenance. Looks like 16, it's either 1442 or 1644. They got this laid out kind of weird. Um, but just an example, you could find this as your, your base pay. And then to that, you're going to add on um, fringe benefits, uh, 454. And then any additional, you know, payroll taxes, insurance, FICA Fuda Suda all that type of stuff that you contribute half as an employer. You know, you should have your pricing figured out. If not, get with an accountant. Um, I am not your accountant, but just kind of letting you know that's what you use this fourth and last document for. So guys, that was a really quick rundown. I'm pretty impressed with myself, if I will say how uh, quickly I was able to go through that one. So I do believe this is a really, really strong opportunity. Uh, again, this is for the Army Bristol, Pennsylvania. A five-year contract though looks like it's got some some good pricing cleans on there for you to make some money and um, do some comprehensive work instead of just doing one thing I believe it was six different uh, things that you're pricing out for every single year so that's gonna be 30 different pricing cleans over the course of five years that you're gonna be billing out under so I have really really strong feelings about this and you know it's total small business set aside so there really is nothing holding you back from going after this they didn't even ask for past performance so if you're in grounds maintenance, you know, if you can get out to this area again, you know, if it's not your area, but if it's worth going to the site and visit, if you're in a neighboring state or something like that, it could be worth that five-year contract. Okay, guys, now it's time to read the comments. So first up, we have Chris Mogg. Chris says, the current five-year contract value on this, referring to last week's janitorial bid proposal training video, uh, the value was $220,245.70. Is this figure per year or combined? Seems too small at $20 an hour with four employees and insurance. Um, it depends. My guess is uh, you got that figure from contracting. I know there was another comment on this, Chris. I said, how did you get to that number? I also have that question. How did you get to that number? If you reached out to contracting and contracting told you that number, um, you you know, this is what I why I wanted to read this. Um, you need to go back and ask contracting, you know, because, because I don't know. Um, but I can tell you that they're not paying $220,000 per year for this because it's just not going to be, you know, that large. And if this is a five-year contract, it's going to put you at over a million dollars. Um, and I just, you know, from memory's sake, you know, it was a week ago already and I've looked at a lot of solicitations, but um, I'm pretty sure it's not that large. So um, my other question to you, Chris, is um, where did the four employees come from? Because many of the janitorial services contracts that I see uh, they're done with one or two people. So that could be another reason as to why the numbers aren't working out for you. Even the $20 an hour, 
you know, it's I know they had a, a, a number in there and that was the, the number that contracting said what a government employee would earn. So you, you may be able to pay a little bit less than that because that's not necessarily what you have to pay. Again, with the wage determination, you just have to justify it with occupation code and many contractors play the game with finding the the lowest paid code as possible while it's still being relevant. You know, it's not gonna be Catholic priest when it's janitorial, that's not relevant, even though it may be a lower paying or maybe it's higher paying, you know, I don't know, but it has to be relevant. So that would be my feedback to you. And um, when, when in doubt, always ask contracting the question because they are here to help you. Okay, so now next uh, from Drew Wicker, Drew asks, are you supposed to find the staff before you get the contract? Um, this is in regards to uh, reading and responding to a government solicitation uh, video that I did, you know, a year or more ago. Um, how would you f know how many people you had before you submit this template? So let's take the first part of that question first. Are you supposed to find the staff before you get the contract? Um, no. I'm, and when you say find the staff, I'm interpreting that as like putting people on payroll. Like, no, you can't do that. Uh, staffing models do not work that way. You can get like letters of commitment. You can get resumes. You can get things like that, but you cannot get somebody on the clock before you have a contract. You won't even survive for six months without running out of funds and, and digging a hole for your business. So no, you don't find the staff before you get the contract. Instead, what you do is you uh, propose resumes from uh, you know Indeed or, or Monster or any of these other job placement sites, right? And you propose that to the government. And the way that you find out how many employees you need is based on how many FTEs, full-time equivalents or part-timers, the government basically identifies in the solicitation. If they don't identify, oftentimes they don't, they will instead give you an hour allotment. And in which case, just remember one full-time employee is 2,080 hours, which translates to being 1,920 hours billed. So very often you'll see in the price and clean 1920 hours, that should scream to you one full-time person. So if you see like a duplicate or a triplicate of that, then that tells you it's two people or three people. But just like the previous comment with Chris, if you have questions, ask contracting. Okay, next we have a question from uh, Muzarul Islam. Uh, Muzarul asks how to find the contract number in this form. And this is regards to my uh, RFP uh, breakdown proposal video again that I did a while back. Um, well, I can actually show you, there's actually in the SF1449 form, the form that we were just looking at for today's video, I'll actually pull that up again and show you on block number five here, the solicitation number, that is the contract number. Now that's that's the solicitated number. If you are instead looking for an awarded number, that number actually is different. There's a difference between the solicitation number and the contract award number. So for example, if you're you know using past performance or something, you're gonna use that contract award number. So just to keep that in mind, and if you're you know asking contracting, for example, um, again, for like a previous contract, what was the contract number? They're going to give you not the solicitation number that it was solicited out at, Instead, they're gonna actually give you a contract number. But for this question, I assume you're referring to the solicitation number and it's a uh, block five here that you can find it in this form. Okay, next we have professional ultimate painting. How did you write the proposal with their requirements? Did you send the requirements to subcontractor for them to fill it out and then you put everything together and sent it to the government? This is in regards to my road salt video, um, probably my most famous video that you know people, not that it's famous at all, um, but the most notable video that people refer to when they speak with me about YouTube or my videos and how they found me. Um, so let's break this down. How did you write the proposal for the requirements? Well, specifically for this, um, what this is, is a uh, this was a negotiated 8A sole source. If you watch the video, nobody could find the salt. That's That was the whole premise and context of this whole video. And it was about me going out for two to three weeks, going through all of these kind of battles and challenges and journeys to find the salt. And I actually ended up finding it and, and kind of winning that winning that contract to be my first contract. So I didn't have to do a big old proposal requirement for that because it was a negotiated 8A sole source. And quite honestly, they wanted our, our cover letter, a little bit of a letterhead. Um, they wanted to make sure that some of the technical things like the anti-caking you know, yellow and blue dye, I still remember it, this yellow caking agent that goes within the road salt um, that they needed specifically for the Air National Guard base. We needed to write to that to, to let them know that the salt we were providing was in accordance with that. And then they needed our price. 
So, you know, it wasn't some formal thing. Sometimes that's how 8A sole sources go, especially things that are, you know, below simplified acquisition threshold. The contracting procedures are a little bit, you know, easier, a little bit more streamlined, um, not as much paperwork and, you know, hoops to jump through. If you're asking more specifically, you know, in general, well, that's what this whole channel is about on how to respond to bids on contracts. Um, and I would recommend that you check out, you know, GovCon Gold Rush, you know, our ultimate government contracting training program. If you're really looking to learn the fundamentals, for this question um, to learn how to do this. Okay guys, so we'll just wrap things up in a few more lighter ones. Um, varied Perspective says, sound video, thank you for putting together the effort for such a good product. This is in regards to my four stages of a bid video. Um, varied Perspective says, new subscriber. Hey Varied Perspectives, thank you so much. I appreciate you for subscribing to the channel here and really happy to have you the community and we welcome you in with open arms and i um, curious to know what type of government contracting business are you going to be pursuing? You know, keep letting us know um, in the comments. And I look forward to hearing what your business can do in the future. And the last comment I'm going to read for today is from Casey Monique. Uh, she says, I had no clue, but as usual, your information is amazing. Um, thank you so much, Kessie. Uh, hope I'm pronouncing your name properly, Kessie. Uh, thank you so much. I know you've been around the channel for a little bit. I recognize your name, so thank you for letting me know that. Guys, today's bit of the day, if you will, was about that ground maintenance contract. If there's anybody here in our community, again, that can do this, I urge you, this is a good opportunity for you, base plus four options. And just in general, anybody who's watching this, if you're a small business owner, you wanna get into government contracting, I'm basically letting everybody know about GovCon Gold Rush. It's our ultimate training program. I've got all the solicitations, everything you need in their templates to get you going to responding to these bids. You also get weekly access to me during our weekly office hours in our own private Facebook group that you've probably never even seen before. It's only for members of GovCon Gold Rush. So I'll link that up in the description if you wanna find out more information about this program. Um, but also today's bit of the day solicitation, you'll find that all the details for that in the description of today's video as well. Keep grinding, guys. Make sure you check out this video or this video don't bounce off the channel. And if you are about to, make sure you like that video and subscribe first because I very much appreciate your subscription. Until the next video, guys, take care and I'll see you very soon.